We are gathering in Christ, sharing His love, and we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We're glad that you joined us here for worship at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida on Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We hope that you will be drawn closer to God through your worship with us and that you will call someone on the phone after the service to share that joy with them. There will be no drive-in communion this Tuesday, April the 6th, as I will be taking some vacation until April the 12th. I'm pleased to announce that our church council is about to uh, have a conversation with the pastoral candidate. And please uh, keep watching your email for updates on that process. And please keep our council in your prayers. There is no virtual coffee hour today or next Sunday, April the 11th. It will resume on Sunday, April the 18th. Worship will continue online for the foreseeable future. Please pray that these vaccines work and that we will have an end to this pandemic. Now, please join me at the font as we give thanksgiving for our baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church where we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for resurrection of our Lord is found in Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were opposed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All of the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, my God. 
second lesson for the resurrection of our Lord is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim it, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The young man in the white robe said, He has been raised. But he didn't say, By whom? Who could have raised Jesus from the tomb? Who was strong enough to roll the stone away? Join me now as we try to find out who done it. Grave robbers. Yeah, that's who did it. Yeah. They knew that Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. They figured there must be something of value there. Yep, it was grave robbers. They always traveled in groups so they would have had enough men to roll the stone away. These guys would stoop at nothing to make a buck. Yep, it was them. But wait. Grave robbers didn't post a man in a white robe at the tomb after they had stolen what they came for 
And if they did, they certainly wouldn't have instructed him to let the women know that Jesus was going ahead to Galilee and they would see him there. Okay, so the whole grave robber thing doesn't fly. It was the Roman soldiers. They're big and strong. They could have moved the stone and come in and taken the body. Somebody in charge probably gave them orders and they were just following orders. But no, that still doesn't explain the young man in the white robe. Why would the soldiers have left the stone rolled away and the tomb open anyway? There were plenty of soldiers they could have just rolled the stone back in place and nobody would have been the wiser. And again, the issue of the man in the white robe. So, no, it wasn't the Roman soldiers. Maybe it was a disgruntled religious leader. They certainly hated Jesus enough to pull off something like this. Look what they had already done. They had wrongly accused Jesus. They bullied Pontius Pilate into having him crucified. They spat on him and taunted him even as he was dying on the cross. Yep, they're the likely suspects. Virtually nothing would stand in their way and stop them from getting what they wanted. But again, the young man in the white robe. Now, it wasn't the religious leaders. I'll bet it was kids. No, kids aren't strong enough to roll that big stone away. Animals? No, probably not. The disciples? No, the women had been with the disciples all night long, and uh, they knew that none of them had slipped away. So who done it? Who is the most likely candidate for one, rolling away the stone, two, raising Jesus from the dead, and three, posting a young man in a white robe in the grave to tell whoever might have come in what happened to Jesus' body. Well, you guessed it. It was none other than God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You see, when we encounter a phrase in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, that has a passive verb in it, a passive statement like, he has been raised, and the person who does the raising isn't specified, then we call it the divine passive. And the person doing that action is God. Jesus has been raised by God. God had the motive, the means, and the opportunity. Can you tell I watch a little too much crime TV? God was motivated to get his son back in heaven where he truly belonged. God knew that the only way that he could do that was to sacrifice his only son so that in death, Jesus could conquer death. And once that battle was over, return to his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. He had the means. Well, that goes without saying. Of course God had the means. He's God. And he had the opportunity. It was the time, the opportune time, the time God's time, that Kairos time, had already been fulfilled. So what did God do? God reached down from heaven with his loving hand and gently cradled his son in it and lifted him ever so carefully back into his divine presence. Oh, and the young man in the white robe, who do you think he was? One dead giveaway, uh, no pun intended, was the way he addressed the women that morning. First thing out of his mouth was, do not be alarmed. Who says those words? That's right, angels. The young man in the white robe was an angel sent by God. Yet another angel to proclaim the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. An angel to let us all know that the son is safe in his father's arms because Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! 
Amen. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially Jan, Jane, Edith, Evelyn, Bob, and those we name before you now, on our lips or in our hearts. Assure them that you, of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called to your beloved in baptism. 
multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And God also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those who might be watching this video with you. And as always, give someone a call after the service to share that peace with them. At this time, we would normally take up our offering. However, we're still not in normal times. So we do thank those who have continued to support our ministry by sending in your tithes and offerings to our church office and also giving through the giving portal on our website. For those who have been impacted negatively by the coronavirus, we continue to keep you in our prayers.
is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.